The following podcast may be explicit. One Joe Young presents Adventures from the Shed, a tabletop RPG podcast. You can find us online at adventuresfromtheshed.com. Hi, we are here again with Adventures from the Shed with part two of session zero, which if you put them together makes 20. So we've been at this for 20 so far. Everybody's here. I am Joe. We're going to get right back to this Adventures from the Shed 2.0 online edition. Randy's here. Hey, guys. Say hi, going hi Randy. Hi, everybody. Hi, Randy. Oh, that was for him. My bad. <laughs> so me or you guys? Everybody can say hi, Randy. I thought it was hey, like, it, like, okay. <laughs> so, Randy, I'm going to give you the 30-second version of everything that happened in the last hour. Sweet. Ready? <laughs> Do you take notes? Yes, I'm taking them right now, actually. All right. Here's the deal. You're going to be starting in the lands of Never, N-E-E-V-E-R. Um, as Chris stated, it's neither here nor there. Uh, that, yeah, exactly. We have to have at least one stupid joke to start every episode, which was mine where I said we've done this for 20. Uh, we never out. thought we were going to start today. Nice. Yeah. Um, and the way you can picture that is there's this, it's a map. There's a big continent. It's called Never, the lands of Never. All around the edges are Darby Dragons kind of thing. Where you find yourself is all the way on the east side of the map. There is this impassable mountain range called the Mountains of the Lost. You are in a town at the foothills of the mountains, and that town brims with tales of what might be on the other side. And on a nice clear day, the the local stories and legends tell about a guard tower that you can see up towards the top of the nearest peak. And that's um, our, our general beginning. Like I say, that's your 30 second version of the last hour. And it wasn't the whole hour, mind you, that was just my intro. Um, what we were talking about is mainly what kind of character do you think you might want to play? Why would your character be in the town? And what is the actual reason for adventuring? Um, Eli said that he has a character. Chris said yes. that he has a character. Jason says that he has a character. All ideas at this point, not actual characters. But um, did you already have an idea for a character? Indeed, I did. Uh, I sent you guys a text about a, uh, a specific character I wanted to try, and I took your guys' opinions on what to do. So I was thinking of making an uh, older gentleman, a human uh, bard, who was a former innkeeper and recently lost it and is trying to gain it back over time and get his reputation back. What did he lose? He lost his business. He ran an inn, and his son, who was uh, delivering for him between villages, he lost that as well. Okay. So he, it's like um, he hit rock bottom, skid row, or, or did he just lose the business and that's What's that? What's the whole poison thing? The stuff was poisoned, right? Are you going with that story? Yeah, that's what I was uh, shooting for. Uh, I never got any word back from uh, from Joe about it, but uh, yeah. Don't you? Well, I don't have a newborn, so I. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Pull that one off. <laughs> <laughs> so um, here, yeah, no, I, that was a that, that was a cool story. Yeah, hit it, hit it, Randy. That was a cool uh, little blurb. My, my thought, honestly, my thought was I wanted to just start hearing everybody's stuff without necessarily talking about it outside. Okay. Um, mainly, and, and, and I'm cool with you sending me stuff. Chris sent me a background too, and, and that's all good. But the idea for me is there's the expose here of starting a group. And I do want to get, unless you have something secret in your character background at this point, I do want to get as much of it out in the open as we can so that people are hearing how we're starting up this group. That's the idea, really. Rather than you send me something and I reply to it, and then you reply to me and I reply to it, and then we get on here, and it's like, well, we already made this decision. It'd be cool to have the interaction. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. All for that. So you said human. So it was uh, an innkeeper. What, uh, he, what class do you think? Uh, I'm thinking bard. Okay. Yep. Uh, is there like a more of a poet kind of bard because if i'm going to be using this voice i kind of don't really want to <laughs> try to <laughs> the way i see it is inspiration is in the ear of the beholder right so you can play music you can sing you can be a good orator um i would say although hitler wasn't a bard he was very persuasive 
Well, and he make also him like a inspired a, a lot kind of, of people. Guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, Shakespeare. You know, you could you could write sonnets, but you could do a little puppet show. You could do puppet shows. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. that's pretty you cool. You could put you put little googly eyes on your hand and just do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a stand-up comedian. No, you have so. more hit points. <laughs> there you go. That's how he lost his tavern. He went crazy and he started talking to the googly eyes on his fist. <laughs> he sold the inn to his fist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, now it's called Hand Over Fist. <laughs> oh, my. I, uh, uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, Randy, if you had that, the idea of just inspirational sayings, and I'm, I want to use the word inspirational inspiration because that's what it is with the bard, right? You're yeah. giving inspiration. So the, the idea is you're going to inspire somebody. How do you do that? Uh, it may not be by, um, as we tried in the, the last time we talked, uh, hitting your drums with your guitar. You might not be doing that. You might just be saying things that are inspiring. Um, you know, like the, uh, the Kennedy speech about going to the moon and, you know, the Martin Luther King speeches, and what have you. They, the inspiring words don't necessarily need a soundtrack. Call yourself a jelly donut. It'll be fine. I think I'll just have him as a classic lute player who once had a decent voice, but uh, when he retired as an innkeeper, he uh, smoked too much, and now his voice is gone. So I like that. I can relate to it. <laughs> what would that be? There was, um, oh like gosh, uh, jazz poetry. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> not like yeah. a spoken word, pretty much. I mean, come on. I, I was thinking of... Um, what was it? And so I married an axe murderer. If anybody saw or remembers that Mike Myers film, uh, there's just kind of like a jazz background and he's doing a poem about how he, he loves this girl and she doesn't love him or whatever. And it, it's that kind of thing that I was thinking of where you're not necessarily going to sing because you don't think you sound that good, but you can talk along with a, a, a tune. Yeah. Well, he will do his best. Cool. What um, what inspires him to adventure at this point? Is it just regaining what he lost, or just starting anew? What what what, what might it be? Well, when he was released from uh, the hold, he was uh, only had the clothes on his back and the desire to adventure and buy back his end. So he wants to adventure. He wants to explore. He also wants to make that gold to get his business going again. He wants gold. <laughs> so he for the money. Fed. <laughs> must be fed. Yes. Like one uh, coin, two <laughs> coin, three coin. <laughs> and they just fall out. They fall right out. Uh, the hand Into hand. the thieves' pocket. Yeah, we don't have one yet. Oh. I don't think I'm anybody surprised. has specifically chosen a thievery character. Chris, you <laughs> you did not, right? Uh no, I might go with. Uh, you, you might know, okay. The, it's still possible. I might go with the warlock guy, though. Okay. Yeah, darken up, darken up. The, yeah, things going on. So now that we've heard a little bit about Randy's, Eli, you want to give a recap of uh, what you're thinking for yours? Yeah, so I'm thinking uh, a, a a family man, a father. He's uh, taking the taking up the call to adventure to <laughs> get gold. He wants the gold. <laughs> Um, and get away from his called. kids. That's what he wants to do. No, well, literally no. Fa- fame and fortune, right? <laughs> he, he wants the fame to get the fortune to put yeah. his kid through college. That's what he wants. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not doing it because he hates his family or he wants to be away from them. It pains him so much to not be in his lover's arms. But you know what? <laughs> Breaking the bed don't exactly, you know, put money in the bank. <laughs> That's a bumper so. sticker. It's a long bumper <laughs> sticker, but it's there. It's yeah, that's the that's the like real basic synopsis for him. I mean, if if we're going with the uh, plot hook for this campaign, he's come to this area because he's heard the stories. He wants to be the first to go out there, come back, and sell his stories, start an industry. I like get the paid idea to go of, back again. I like the idea of selling the stories. That's that's a cool idea, because uh, it's m- typical that you would sell treasures, um, but a story as a treasure is a very cool idea. I like that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. What um, 
um, is fighter is what you you think you're going to go with? Yeah, I'm, thi- with, with I'm leaning big towards ass sword. fighter. Yeah, yeah, leaning towards fighter with 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 the greatest sword. The greatest. Although the greatest I might level one sword ever. ever. Oh, absolutely! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Levels I'm... don't do damage. Steel does damage. <laughs> I am kicking around making him a sorcerer of some type because the, the biggest thing about him putting his kid through quote unquote college is because, you know, they've got some magic going on. They're two years old and are already starting to like pool together energy and burn the windowsill and whatnot. So he's like, you know what? I'm not qualified to teach him. <laughs> I need money to pay somebody else to do it and to fix my windowsill. It's a tutor. Yeah. <laughs> So one yeah. thing, uh, you just made me think of something that I like to do. I like to bend the rules uh, substantially just to, to make some fun out of it. But one of the things I was thinking is if you can find something you would give up as a fighter to have, you know, maybe one or two level zero spells, mm. that would be something I'd be willing to, to look at. Can it be my greatsword? <laughs> <laughs> No, because you made it up. Ah, <laughs> oh, darn it. All right. I'll, I it's, guess it's I'll do the extra like, research. If you would pick um, something as a fighter, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't remember, honestly, all the stuff you pick at level one, but maybe it's a proficiency. Maybe you're not going to allow yourself to wear oh, any so. plate armor. Or something and, like giving up maybe his act, ability to action surge or something like yeah, that. Oh, no, something. no, that's staying. That's it. But <laughs> just, I mean, it, just throw it out something like that. <laughs> yeah, but it could be know, like maybe superiority that or two. Yeah, and, and like I say, it could be something like a proficiency. Maybe you can never wear a heavy armor, um, but that just you, just you know it interferes down. with your innate magic or something like that. But find something that you think, uh, if you want to do this, because you said you want to find a way to work magic into it. Um, find something that you would be willing to swap for, uh, you know, one or two level zero spells and then think of what those are and let me know. All right. I'll definitely look into it. Cause we can do that. I like the idea of it's, it's an internal balance of the character. You give up something that is defining you as a fighter so that you can have something that you want without having to go all the mess of multi-classing. No. Uh, yeah. I, that can get a bit messy. Yeah. Especially when, it's like having two character sheets. Well, it, it isn't that bad, but it's enough stuff, and we can't even see one to begin with. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, you want to give yes. Randy a recap of uh, 00.5? 00.5. So my <laughs> character is a halfling uh, named on the stream, actually, Bel G. Umwaffle, uh, for Belgian waffle. Uh, uh, he, actually, I'm thinking... Uh, because again, this is you know, uh, this, this entire stream is to introduce people to Dungeons and Dragons. I'm thinking because the name is Belle, and Belle is one of my favorite Disney princesses because my kid loves her and everything else like that. I think I'm about right. make her a female instead of a male, just because uh, I think that could be a cool thing to to show anyone who's looking to play. You don't have to stay with one gender or another. You can play them however you want. Exactly. But, but uh, she is uh, a a rogue-esque individual who's aspiring to become an elite agent, a secret kind of agent, a, a la James Bond, which is why they call it double, double five. Um, double point five. Double point five. Half. Exactly. Half. It's half exactly. Link. Half link. Um, <laughs> she, she grew up in, in a, in a large city where again, you know, it just wasn't, there was all these tales of these, they like the penny kind of comics and things like that about these agents that would go out and have these grand adventures or go and stop a, a enemy nation and all these things here. And she aspires to be that she carries around with her a fake badge that she made herself to trying to pass off as a, you know, a, a higher level of authority. She always tries to maybe help out in investigations uh, when she's not needed or not necessarily even really good at it, but she, she generally has good intentions. Um, she is going into this adventure because she found a journal that was from supposedly one of the greatest of the secret agents as far as the tales, uh, going over how they went beyond the lost, uh, the mountains of the lost. And in order to prove herself worthy of, again, membership of this secret organization, she is going to take it upon herself to traverse these mountains as well. So that's the basis gist of this character. 
And she wants to be the most famous of the secret people. She does. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't get it. She doesn't get it, but she, <laughs> she wants it, and she wants it desperately. Now, let me mention um, mm-hmm. something, because I, I know Chris has heard me say this before, and I'm not going to stop anyone from playing anything, but one of my general rules has been you typically play the gender you are because most people end up confusing it while they're playing anyway. True. Yeah. That, th- that's the reason I say it. So that's my typical rule, but I'd like to see how you do it before I make any judgment on any individual. So it works for me. Either way works for me. Um, cause I don't have any problem with, a uh, guy playing a girl character, a girl playing a guy character, or even playing a I don't, gender neutral character wouldn't make a difference at all to me. The only thing that usually pops up and why I, I try to keep it as a rule of thumb is at some point people will confuse the way they're speaking, the pronouns they use, and then you have to restate it. And should my character have been reacted to differently because of whatever, um, but I wanted to throw that out there so you're aware that uh, if you go back and listen to or other people who have followed the podcast, they've heard me say that probably 10 times over four years or so that we typically don't do that. Now, to be fair, Kurt, when I first met Kurt, one of the um, guys from the, po- the audio podcast, he, uh, he was playing female character and it was fine. You know, there was no problem with that. So I'm cool with it. Uh, oh yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll mess with. It. I'll think about it here as far as how I want to play. Yeah. If I don't think I can play it well, then I, I, I'll switch back there. But yeah. the name Bell just got to me. I'm like, oh, that's Bell from <laughs> the Beast. <laughs> it works. It, it definitely works. Yeah, I was I was thinking when it comes to the play as well. One of the things that we can talk about um, because clearly I'm not going to give Chris a chance to talk about his character. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> one of the things that we can talk <laughs> about. One of the things we'll put into practice. Like Randy mentioned with the, the gruff voice for the, uh, the, the smoking bard, uh, there's, no, there, there's not a necessity to be really good at voices oh, in yeah. order to play the game. Nor do you even have to use any voice other than your own. You can have fun with your own voice for the character or even just putting pauses where you wouldn't normally talk, repeating parts of a sentence. Like I, I had a... Um, a halfling bartender once, and I can't remember if it was during your time on the podcast or not, Chris, but the halfling bartender that would repeat the last two words of everything he said. And that, that was just the way I would play it, would play it. And it was just my own voice. I didn't have to try a little halfling voice or anything. Right. right. Um, or what was, the, what was the guy with the, uh, oh man, I can't remember his name. The list. Oh, well, forget it. Yeah. Saunders. 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 Hey, Saunders. that character, Saunders had a lisp. And then later, yeah. there was another character named Sanders who was Sanders, a cousin yeah. of Saunders. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. And, yeah. yeah, I definitely spit on the microphone a fair bit. Yeah. But that was, uh, <laughs> and that was the whole, that, that was the, the character. But, but my, my point being, you don't have to do a voice. No. And anybody right. can. Uh, most people think it's way cooler when you do. But the reality is, if you're playing a fun character, people will pay attention to the character, not necessarily the voice. Absolutely. And again, a lot of new DMs that I talk to as well, they are intimidated by doing this because they don't think that they can do a voice. They, they watch Critical Role or any of these other kind of shows. Where they're all oh, trained right. professionals. Yes. And, and they are. They're voice actors, for goodness sake. That's their job. That's their gig. <laughs> That's butter. what they're paid to do. Yeah. You're not that person. And, you know, I even tell my players because, you know, I, I've – I've DM for for a number of individuals, and some of them have anxiety, and they they they, they get a chance to to live out you know being a, a big brave person when they're maybe not, and they might not know how to approach something. You know, role play is role play. You know, they can tell oh. me, I, I want to go over and I want to sound like this. This is how I want to sound when I'm trying to talk to, them, and I want to say these words. So, so even prefacing just the intention that you're trying to give the DM is for any new players is enough for us to say, okay, we get where you're coming from here, even though you might not have yeah. the improv skills, the acting skills, or whatever skills you might think you need to play this game. Because a, a lot of people do think that with you know how many games there are online now with voice actors and, and you know regular actors and things like that playing these games but you don't it's 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 uh it's something you can do and still have fun just using your regular voice 
Speaking of regular voices, Chris has a cool voice. Chris, what's your character like? Now, when you have a better, well, actually, I, I think your headset's better now for the microphone. Is it? Okay, yeah, it's got that, yeah, it's got that boom action. There you go. Oh, professional. Boom. Boom. Some, boom. Know, oh, and it has a light on the side. What? Huh? LED oh. light? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Thing of a jig. But anyway, yeah, cool. it's not as cool as Jason's, not some like eighty thousand master blaster. You know? <laughs> well, not not many people are as cool as Jason. We'll just no, know, not really. Not very many. Um, I can just read that background I sent you, Joe, and uh, people. Yeah, could, if you uh, want to, you know, go for it. You know, yeah, your Nate, or like that's cool, or that's horrible. Oh, by the way, I, I specifically picked my green cup again because yeah, yeah, I love it. I feel like I should have read mine too, like word mm -hmm. for word. <laughs> yeah, that would have. You still can. Yeah. If you want to go, go for it. Oh, I'll it's your turn. It. I can right. just say it later. <laughs> but I can keep interrupting them too. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Chris. We're gonna get to this thing. All right. Uh, All right. If you really no. Just <laughs> All right. As soon as Chris starts, I'm gonna mute him. Ready? <laughs> I'm gonna mute myself. Yeah. <laughs> go for it, man. I'm gonna do this in sign language. I don't know how it's going <laughs> Just out. a single sign. There it is. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> What's that? All right. And I'm going. All right. Realmuris was born in the southern Moonwood. So anyway, that wraps it up for this. Hi, bye. Sorry. I'm going to have Randy, just, gonna have Randy read mine. Me. I'll read his, maybe. I can, we'll, we'll I can mute, that off. I'll just mute myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Realmuris was born in the southern Moonwood almost two centuries ago under a blood red moon and a different name. His father was a member of the Knights in the Silver... <clears throat> Sorry, Knights in Silver of the Silvery Moon. His mother died when he was a very young boy, and the memories he has her are fleeting, like the dying embers of a warm fire. With his mother gone and his father busy fulfilling his nightly duties, the young elf found himself getting in trouble throughout the city, running around with the likes of corrupt merchants, gangs of thieves, and mercenaries. Although his father, Varen, frowned upon his only son's choice of friends, the boy did seem to pick up some useful skills. He made sure his young son was trained with swords and bows like any valued knight of the realm. As he grew older, he started to learn about honor, justice, and the universal language of violence. He did not want to follow in his father's footsteps and become just another soldier for the crown. Perhaps a more stealthy and subtle approach to help rid the world of its evils would do. It didn't hurt to have his father's connections within the local government, and the young Colette boy went to work with the High Lord Spymaster, learning how to broker in lies and information and force if needed. I'm sorry, did you say thigh master? Like the exercise thing? Master. Your, yeah. okay. <laughs> sorry. In your thigh master. Suzanne Summers and the thigh master. Oh, man. Sorry. That's the name As of the deity, <laughs> Suzanne Summers. Yeah. And, okay. okay. As the years... <laughs> shut As up, the years Joe, shut like, up. You guys want to play Game Monopoly before I finish it? <laughs> As, as the years passed, his father fell in love with a human noblewoman named Reyna. She was different than most highborn of her class and had no interest in the affairs of politics or who was throwing the most extravagant affairs. She preferred the quieter life and convinced her husband to, to, re, uh, to resign from service and move back out into the Moonwood where Varen was born. Varen had little contact with his son at this time since the younger Colette was away on a mission to infiltrate the organization known as the Eldrith Beluthra. He wrote Romuris hoping he would be back in time to see him be married. Romuris was happy for his father, but he said he would not make it back in time for the wedding. When he finally arrived back at his father's homestead in the Moonwood, he found the residence in disarray, and his father and stepmother murdered with the words, which I had drow words. It basically means death to heretics um, in drow. I was written in blood on the wall. Was this the work of the drow? Did members of the Eldrith, Velour, uh, Eldrith Veluthra find him out? Or was he sold out for someone in the Silvery Moon, basically the Night Order? This drove the young elf to madness, and thoughts of murder and revenge overwhelmed him. He renounced his old gods, took the name given to him by his enemies, and made a pact with a demon called Wendenai to gain dark magics to deliver his retribution upon his adversaries and to all that were involved with the murder of his father and stepmother. Only until he finds and eliminates all involved will he once again retake his true name. That's so he's a nice guy. Apparently, oh, broken home, circus family, whatever. He's my kind of people. <laughs> he's, he's my kind of people. He's says, in the revenge business. He says yeah. the character who has a lovely home life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, he did. I mean, he just went to shit. 
So is um <laughs> is your character angry at the world or angry at his situation? Uh, he's just angry. He's really just angry at a certain group of people, but he doesn't know if this was uh was it indeed the drow or that somebody just set his father up and made it look like it was the drow, you know hmm. that kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> Neat. Randy, did you want to read yours? Uh, yes. Uh, back to me. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> once upon it. Was I finished? I wasn't sure if I was finished. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, it says right here, uh, Chris is a. D- oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that was that's a true statement. <laughs> Chris is, is absolutely is, true. Uh, is, is, it's up for interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm gonna. Script. <laughs> My turn in the barrel. Okay, uh, Miles X Grinder Myers is a middle-aged, recently former innkeeper who owned and ran his own inn. He has salt and peppered, short brown hair, mud and chops, and a connecting mustache. He has two grown sons whom have left the nest. One who hates him left to join the local royal guard or whatever story fills. Uh, that's a, as long as uh, militia based, I don't really care. Uh, or we can just axe that either way. Uh, and the younger to become a traveling merchant who seasonally brings back uh, produce for the tavern. Uh, Miles was a well-respected innkeeper who didn't mind giving extra to whomever needed food or a bed if there were any available. Unfortunately, he had dealt with thieves in the past, so all of his most expensive ale is poisoned, and if purchased, he knew just how much antidote to add to make it safe once more. One day, an overzealous head guard or something similar uh, while collecting taxes grabbed a bottle of ale and started chugging it while the other guards refused to let miles speak when he tried to warn him this led to the death of the guard and the arrest of miles and the seizing of the inn and associated trader cart property being well liked he was released but with only the clothes on his back and the desire to adventure and buy back his inn that was what i had cool so we will have a royal guard um, i'm sure uh, we'll just need to decide where that is in proximity to the town that you're starting in. <clears throat> so that's some of the stuff that we can uh, expand upon now. Now, I think I've heard enough between um, the the different character ideas. To I, I'm comfortable now saying that within a day's travel of the town you're in is a city that definitely has um, a king. And they, there's a royal guard there. They, there's definitely a waypoint for the unpronounceable society that you were talking about, Chris. Um, they, 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 I'm sure they have an office there. And there's at least rumors of the secret society of, uh, you know, the, the, from the, we don't have a name for it yet, but this is secret society for, for you, Jason, for your character. There's, um, Anything you could think of as far as at least one of each would be found within this city. You know, it's a full walled city with uh, sprawling farms outside the city, self-contained economy, all that. Uh, Within about a day's travel by horse um, of the town that you're currently in. That can make it so that everybody at least can have a connection there and nearby. Does anybody want to take a stab at the the town name where we're going to start? And I don't mean like try and guess what I'm thinking. I mean like try and come right. up with something. Take one up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I realized as I said take a stab at it. I'm like, well, let's, let's play 20 questions. Yay. Um, I propose Ket. Ket. How many R's in that? Always double R. And none of them are silent. (laughs) Ghost glass. Um, Cat. I like cat. None. (laughs) Um, We're going to. uh, You can pick the name. I'm going to pick the spelling. He's going to throw like K H E T T E. (laughs) You got it, except for the last E. K H E T T. It starts with a silent Q. Yes. Followed and by a very heavily pronounced R, but you pronounce it in your brain. Yes. It, a, lowercase, a lowercase silent Q. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a sister city, Etta. Etta Ket. It's like a laugh grenade. had to take a lot of blow up. Because <laughs> I was like, Ket Etta, Ket Etta, Ket Etta. 
the hell is he talking about? Yeah. Um, so Ket is the name of the town. And it's, this, again, is a small town. And it really is, I was mentioning in the last, um, the last episode, Randy, I, I, in my head, the way I'm vi- envisioning the way that this town runs is it's like after the gold rush on the West Coast, there's these towns that are just left over that all they talk about was, well, you know, th- this town was set up for the gold rush and we were supporting all these people coming through. And now there's all these stories about how this guy got went and found all this gold and how these people did all this. And that. But nobody in the town really does anything except support adventurers that are on their way through to the fin- the last frontier of, of, ne- of the lands of Never, which is uh, through the mountains of the lost. So it's, you picture everybody in the town as like um, an old person who only talks about the past, <laughs> right? It, 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 the town has that feel to it. Um, and that would be the town of Cat. Regular setup for um, supporting adventurers. You would find two taverns, one where you'll spend more money for better stuff and one where you probably don't want to stay. So <laughs> did they charge us to enter the town? I'm just wondering if we had to pay yeah. a Cat toll. <laughs> which, one, which one was Randy's tavern? <laughs> Cat's ball. Oh. Uh, wah wah. <laughs> Get them all out here, folks. Get them out. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely. Th- you need to say these things while we're recording. Okay. So it's was okay. Randy's tavern the dive tavern or the high society tavern? <laughs> I'm guessing it was from a different town, and he ended up here. That's how we found <laughs> other adventurers. Yeah, well, I set it up my way, but. No, that's fine. The um, the that local or the nearby city does not have full jurisdiction over the town. It's just mainly run by local sheriff and um, a couple of volunteers. So th- there's really nobody stays more than a day or two unless they live there. And there's only maybe a hundred people that live in the town. And it's all based on people passing through. So every now and then, I shouldn't say every now and then, pretty much every day, there are um, wagons that come through dropping off food and supplies and stocking up merchants and things like that. But um, you can, there's at least one little shop where you can find all the little trinkets for, you know, Mountains of the Lost (laughs) Keychain kind of thing. Because... (laughs) That's what this place is even in existence for. It's your last stop before you head off into no man's land. I can never find my name on these shields. <laughs> <laughs> the more we describe this town, it sounds just, it, it's just a tourist trap. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> there, there's no reason to stay there because there's nothing to do there. Everything, uh, everything to do is, is somewhere else. It's either where you came from or the place you want to go that nobody comes back from. <laughs> so we have the town of Ket, and I'm going to put here in my note that there's a big city nearby. Anybody want to come up with a city name? Um, uh, I used to use Malagar all the time and stuff. So clearly it won't be Malagar. Okay. Um, <laughs> No, that, I mean, that is what it's going to be now. So you said it. It is it. Um, so the city near Ket is called Malagar. Um, it's about a day's travel by horse. I'm typing right over your face, Randy. <laughs> Take that. Take that. <laughs> you moved. <laughs> Get him. Um, type up take my face. You can't see me. <laughs> So it is uh, a, um, a part of part of the kingdom is ruled by by a king. What's his name? Jason. What's the king's name? Oh goodness, the king's name is uh, Corazon, the king. Nice. Corazon. I'm going to put a Z in that. Yeah, that's it's, what I was uh, thinking. It's I tried to spell it, and it just came out Corazon. <laughs> <laughs> it's ruled by King be- Heart. <laughs> It's going to be Horizon, but starting with a C instead. There you go. Dope. Horizon, but starting with a C. I like it. I wrote a K. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll still say Corazon. Gotcha. Um, so the Corazon family has ruled uh, Malagar for uh, centuries. It's just on and on and on. Uh, they are 
they have the Royal Guard, and they are just called the Royal Guard, just to make it simple. Um, let's see, uh, what do we have here today? We're going to say their colors are blue and yellow. And that's uh, the colors of the crest and the colors of Royal Guard wear. So every tapestry you find that uh, signifies Malagar has some blue and yellow on it somewhere. So Randy, your uh, character son, probably had a blue and yellow uniform at some point. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I like those colors together. I was actually going with what I thought your shirt was. <laughs> <laughs> it's blue shirt day. Yours is kind of gray. It's gray. It's, yeah. it's blue enough. Eli? Is I can a go black change. Shirt? Uh, yeah, I'm wearing all black. We had the blue shirt club going before we you did. guys we joined. Did. I never got the memo. <laughs> These things don't come to my door. You know, maybe I placed it in the wrong cardboard box. That could yeah. be. Could be. The then you put the blanket board? over it. <laughs> That's right. I can't see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, what else do we want to have? Right now, still the for me at least the the basis of what we're doing is what's going to help you guys hopefully uh, flesh out your characters more so that when we're ready to start the actual play and you have your character created, you have a feel of what the world is like where that character lives. So what else do you want to uh, have in existence to make that a true thing? Hmm. <clears throat> so we talked about, um, uh, the kid who is developing magical talents yeah. is uh, easy enough to say that there is some sort of um, wizarding academy or magical tutelage of some type within um, Malagar. Oh, I've got I've got a few uh, up and ready to go. <laughs> cool. My my personal game. I have one of the biggest plot points is that they're like four major magical college, colleges, okay. each with their own pretentious sounding name. <laughs> right, Which where? one do you want to be in Malagar? Um, I'm thinking, what is it, Avidas and Borsman? Hold on a second. Yep. Avidas and Borsman. No, Avidas <laughs> and Borsman College of Magical Studies. In my universe, they specialize in uh, pumping out abjurers and transmuters. But for this... It's, it could just be a generic magical college. College of Magical Studies? Yes. Okay. Avidas and Borgen. Boards, uh, Boersman. Boersman? Yes. The Boersman. Yes. I'll yeah, move my cursor. Boersman. <clears throat> I have no idea how you spelled it, but I spelled it phonetically for myself. Um, if anybody else cares about what I did, is A V A D A S and B O R S M E N. Oh, College yeah, of good. Magical Studies. Yep. That's almost how I've got it exactly, except that second A is an I in Avidas, and Bor has an E between have, the R and S. You have to pronounce it without those. Though. Exactly. <laughs> those are just extra. It's, it's a magical letters. college. Of course they're going to be pretentious. Yeah. I was thinking of, um, I was thinking in my head of what kind of uh, competitions they would have with other magical colleges. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've got that too. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, and it was abjuration and what, what, what was the other? Transmutation. 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 Thank you. And do you want to hear the other schools? <laughs> um, not yet. Because yep. they're, just, they're going to be somewhere else for now. It's important to know there are other magical colleges um, and that they are in competition with one another. That's a, that, that, to me, at least, that's the important part to start. The one that's nearby that we would all have heard of um, would be Avidas and Borsman. Cool. Um, Maybe I what should a, uh, open up a law class in that one. <laughs> I just like it. It does sound like a law. <laughs> it's it's got the classic like formal tune. Yes. Hurt by magic missile. Call <laughs> Avidas and Borsman. You may. <laughs> we'll settle We're your case out of court. If you or a loved one subject to a polymorph spell within the last six months, you may be entitled to compensation. Yes, we earned 500 <laughs> copper for one client. 
<laughs> you don't pay until we win. <laughs> Jason, what is the name of the secret society? Or does oh, it have secrets. one? I haven't got the name yet for it here, but it's thinking about secret. Malagar, <laughs> it's that secret. It's that secret yeah. is how it works here. Do you want to uh, make it so it's just a symbol instead of a name or something? I think like so. That? I think that would be pretty cool if it didn't have an actual official name. But uh, okay. uh, that's something that, again, I, I, can, I can work on as far as just the name of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as Malagar and why I might have passed through there, um, I was thinking as soon as you were talking about the colors and everything that uh, Bell would actually have a, a generic crest or a, 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 a mark from the guards. A passport uh, for Malagar. Exactly, a passport yeah. from Malagar. Um, going into this city, which was again a, a very large city, was, um, you know, she or he, whoever I've decided again, we're gonna see how well I can play it. If I'm confident, then we'll sure. Go from there. Um, but uh, going in there, reading some of the lore from some of the books and some of the journals, uh, the 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 super awesome agent that is her grand idol passed through there as well. And it talked of uh, him going in and uh, rooting out corruption inside the military and saving the kingdom and working with these things here. So I'm thinking that she uh, went to the uh, Malagar military industries where they actually do their crafting of their weapons and things. It, it kind of got in the way to a large degree, uh, trying to do some investigation. And then maybe um, if, uh, you know, a way to tie in uh, the reason why we're all together here, if Eli's character was at uh, the colleges, maybe she went to these colleges here who were supplying magical beans to, uh, to the guards for whatever reason, and she was investigating that kind of uh, thing here, even though there was really nothing that was to be found of it, potentially. But that's maybe where I met Eli, and came across as Eli maybe found me snooping around the college when I have no business being <laughs> in a college of magic. I asked you, do you know where the man who handles tuition is? <laughs> <laughs> And I impersonated the man who handles admission because I thought that uh, <laughs> he yeah. was somebody <laughs> of importance. Dude, you've, given, you've given me great rates. I, I would love to talk to you again when my son is of Eli age. Eli got kicked out of the college because I gave him a fake, <laughs> a yeah. fake, a fake entry. <laughs> Dang. I got him kicked out because I gave him fake entry too and I forged his tuition papers. So now I'm thinking... Um, when you said college is plural, I'm thinking the way we're going to play this is um, there will be uh, just a handful of major cities within the lands of Never, and each one has a college of different styles. So here's our college of uh, magical studies. There will also be a college of martial studies, a college of nature studies, that kind of thing. And each um, city will have one. And it's kind of, you know, when you're growing up, if you want, you know, the best nature college, you go over to that city. If you want the best magical college, you go over to that city, that type of thing. So kind of the way we treat colleges in the U.S., for that matter. Um, you want to live in the area where the, the best college is, or, or at least where you could get a scholarship. Uh, and when you mention tuition, there, I'm <laughs> sure there are several lower-level community colleges around. <laughs> You learn up to second level spells. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's, all, that's, all that's your that's your certificate. <laughs> and um, your pet because you have a passport, you get a, a you know local discount because exactly. you, you live there. Um, I have a crest idea for the guards of you guys. Oh, that'd be Ooh. very cool. It's like oh, a yeah. dragon blocking out the sun. Very neat. Oh, I love it. I so like it in my notes. Is it a blue dragon? Uh, yeah, I'd say blue dragon, and then the two crescent moon-like things are the sun with the little stars. Uh, blue and the yellow, that works. Blue and yellow. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so we'll, we'll make that digital if you can. I'll do a better copy and send it to you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking there would be things. I, I'm, I'm still going through all the technical stuff in my head of where I can throw little... Um, uh, JPEGs and stuff up on the screen and where I can fit them and all that stuff. I'll figure all that out because that's the way I want to present it. So it's on me. Um, and Randy, I'd mentioned that you said that you'd take a look at roll 20, but you also said you'd take a look at your newborn and that's more important. Yeah. So had a time. <laughs> you figure, <laughs> you figure it out if you feel like it or if you have the time, but in the meantime, we're going to push forward with what we've got, um, have fun with it and see how we can interchange, uh, 
or exchange, I should say, our ideas digitally. Because for me, again, one of the biggest things is to show people how the game plays, not just play the game. And if we can show our characters, show like what you just showed your your drawing there, uh, show stuff like that, and then repeat it, everything being repeatable in some way is going to help. Mainly because the way we do the show is um, approximately hour-long episodes, and we'll typically do a recap. In this case, our recap was people describing their characters to Randy and me describing the world a little bit. And we'll do the same kind of thing uh, pretty much as we start every episode we'll talk a little about what happened and the ability to pull up things like a character sheet or um, a drawing like that, or maybe the the name of the city with a a little, you know, pencil sketch of a city kind of thing that I think will help us out a little bit. We we're not going to be playing, you know, with minis and grids and all that, but just the, the quick visuals that help us associate. Another thing I thought of that might be fun. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever played this, uh, um, there's an app I've got on the iPhone that's it's been out for a while, but it's called Stick Wars. And the reason I say it is the way they do this game, you have a stick figure. And of course, you have the, the ball head. And they find something unique for each of the different types of things you're doing. Like the fighter's eyes are slanted a certain way, and the wizard just has a hat on top of the ball head. And what I was thinking might be cool is for little character avatars, if we think of one defining thing about the head of your character and just make it like a little stick figure like that, and we can use that as a kind of our reference for who the character is, that could be a fun, easy thing for us to do without having to, you know, commission artists off of Etsy or something. I like it. I like yeah. it. That's pretty dope. Yep. And then uh, also, I, I thought a name came to me as we were talking, and as uh, uh, Randy showed up that picture of the dragon uh, for the Secret Society, I'm thinking the Order of the Eternal Ring. Order? Order? Is it the Order or Order? Order of the Eternal Ring. Okay. Order of the Eternal Ring. Singular? Ring. Yeah, the Eternal Ring. So, yeah. So it's the One Ring? The one ring to rule them all. No, this is in reference to a bell that never goes silent, actually. Ah, I see. (laughs) (laughs) I hear that all the time. They're ringing in my ears. Yes, they're tinnitus agents. (laughs) You hear that? That's proof that they exist. Who else can make a bell never stop ringing? (laughs) Do you hear that? I think they're having to hear them coming constantly. I I like that, though. That's a good, um, that's a good, it's, it's, I don't know, self-important enough that we're around forever and we've always been around forever and we will be around, right? <laughs> so that's, uh, I like that. It has some self-importance to it. Um, 30 years and Gondor still calls for aid. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? It might make sense for the inn that my character used to own to be in this town as well since it's so close to where he wandered off to. Okay, so in so the, the the big city of Malagar, you had an inn. So if you think of it from and and I like to when I set up a kingdom or, or, or a big city, I like to think of it in rings. <clears throat> so you have the one middle ring where all your upper class, well, not even upper class, but the the nobility live, all yeah. the family and their relatives, and they all live in there. They're, that's where the keep is, you know, the proper cast, castle. And then outside of that ring, that's where your rich people live. And then after that is your marketplace. And then after that, you get to your slums, essentially. And then after that, you're Kinda outside like of the walls in the farm. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I like to That's think as the stereotypical, <clears throat> if you're familiar with the way that city is set up, it would be like that. Um, most average inns and taverns would be somewhere in what I would call the marketplace ring. So, Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Maybe closer to the slums more than the rich. Yeah. Because he would take in anyone that needed a bed if he had any extras. So. Uh, and um, what was the name of it? And it did was, it change after you lost it? That's what I wrote down. It was Stay In End. <laughs> a little pun with the name there. And uh, they changed it to the Gobble Inn. Ah, <laughs> oh, you turkey. That's awesome. And they hired a goblin to run it, I guess. <laughs> 
I'll be <laughs> right back, guys. <laughs> All right. You want room? You pay. He's dropping, dropping that bomb and walking away. <laughs> we just got you, know, you always go on a high. You always leave yeah. on a high note. That's how it works. That's it. Look, look at this. Clearly, Randy likes Pokemon. <gasps> oh, look at the baby. Oh, he's gone. What, what's the population of the Malagar, the bigger city? Is it like tens I like of the thousands? Num- I was just going to say I like the number 10,000. Okay. Ish. Yeah, that's, that's fine. As long as it's not hundreds uh, of thousands, we're still, you know, not giant. A thousand ones. adjacent. Yeah. I mean, if you want to sprawl out to the suburbs, it's probably, you know, triple that. Yeah. But Malagar proper is uh, yeah, right. about 10,000. City limits. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, where, what the Royal Guard and other militia is responsible for maintaining and where t- taxes are directly collected would be the 10,000. So we're saying there's a king around, but who's running the town? Is it like some council or like a mayor? Or? So the town, um, the town of Ket, you mean? No, Malagar, city of Malagar. Oh, so, all right, so Malagar is um, is run by the royal family, uh, and, and pretty much anybody who has the name Corazon uh, has a job. Yeah. You know, you're you're a state employee essentially, government employee. Nepotism city. Yep, <laughs> that's the other name for it. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, so any job you can think of, of any importance, any job that is paid for by the city taxes is um, occupied by a relative of the king. Okay. Are they, uh, what's the Corazon family like? They're, uh, they're you know, corrupt, middle ground, or they're goody it's, tissues? It's changed over the years. It wasn't too long ago that um, there was corruption that was rooted out by some supposed secret agent. Uh, but that was about 50 <laughs> years ago or so. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it wasn't um, wasn't too recent, and nobody really complains too much about the city. You have your regular complainers that yeah. uh, you know taxes went up by one percent last year, um, and then What's everyone else 1%? is percent. I don't know. They don't pay for our education. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no free college. <laughs> you were giving us a hundred of these before. Now you give us a hundred and one. How's that? They forced your papers. You got the the, the <laughs> local rate. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, like I said, some people will complain that. Um, that taxes went up last year, but then you know other people are saying, well, it was only 1% and they hadn't raised taxes in 10 years and yeah, whatever. There's, it's average. The mood in um, okay. Malagar is average. Uh, people don't mind that they're ruled and that the family runs everything <clears throat> as long as they themselves are well off. The people right. who are not well off think that they're being robbed in some way. And again, I like to use stereotypes a lot as we're generating stuff, and then we put in the exceptions as we go. So there are definitely going to be some people uh, in the uh, lower class sections of town that really love the king, but not everybody, right? No, not most people. Gotcha. That's fair. I'm back. Yes, Hello. you are. You saw the baby walk by a minute ago. Oh, I almost fell getting up. It was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was fixated on the double Pokemon. I, I didn't realize you had a Pokemon uh, drape over your chair oh, as well. As yeah, yeah that Afghan, or if, if that's even PC these days. Uh, Af- Afghan is what they used to call them. It's just Afghan. a cover yeah. or whatever. Uh, yeah. My parents hey. got me that when I was like 16. So I got the Afghan with like AK-47 it. and like hind helicopters and like tanks on it. It's like a <laughs> legit Afghan rug. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Is that the Chucky on the shelf up there? Oh, yeah, the My Buddy doll. Yeah, I've had that thing since I was like two. <laughs> my Buddy. My daughter my was buddy. playing with that and calling it a baby before our son was born. Oh, that's cool. Now, what does she call it? Wait, there's a doll behind <laughs> <laughs> Well, he was there. Not anymore. <laughs> So what at this point, do you guys think you have enough information to give your characters at least a good outline, a good sketch 
um, so that we can add color to your uh, your character drawing in, in the next couple of sessions? I don't see color. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that joke. I only see blue and yellow. <laughs> Just blues and yellows. I can, I can switch it. You know, I actually, only because you said that, I was messing with my camera earlier, and I was switching, uh, turning the color all the way down, and it only clicked in my brain like five seconds after I turned the color off that the green screen wouldn't work. It, it's <laughs> when it's black and white, it doesn't know that that's a green screen behind. And it <laughs> took me a couple seconds, like, oh, what did I just break? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I realized it and turned the color back off. So, anyway, yeah, um, we could see in black and white, but then I wouldn't have a logo. Uh, but yeah, th yeah, the question stands do you guys think? Um, that's good to get started. Do you want to throw a couple of more things out there? We probably got another five, 10 minutes, maybe. I, I got personally, I have more than enough right now. And I, I'm, I'm the brain is turning. So I, I'm good. Cool. Did, did we go over? Cause I can't, I think we did this before Randy showed up kind of like the rumors of why the mountain or the guard tower in the mountain passes there. Actually, was that even mentioned to Randy? The whole. I did. Tale, no As clouds, no mist. Very no, not that part, but the mountains at the tower were mentioned. Yeah, so the, the idea was on a clear day with no mountain mist and no clouds in the way, you can see the remains of um, what is rumored to be a guard tower from an ancient civilization. Ah. That's got to be a pretty big tower. I yeah. just realized that. <laughs> That's worth checking out. <laughs> That's um, what people say it is, but the only person to ever come back left a journal with somebody and no one knows where that is. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, right guess now. we'll never see it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the bar. <laughs> Who gives it? You want to go talk to the fisherman? <laughs> that's a, you know what, uh, Chris? That's actually the um, the name of the bar in one of the local taverns. And Cat is called the Get Lit. The Get Lit. Yeah. Yes. Get Lit. Because I like, I like it. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I think that because like, you know, we have the idea of the rumors like is. is was the guard tower there to guard us from getting across or for something getting back this way? You know, there, there could be, I'd like to see like a huge pile of just the rumor mill just go wild, you know, mm -hmm. stuff. Ooh, that would, that would be nice. Just have a, just a stack of rumors just on hand. So what have you heard around the street yeah. lately? Well, we try to come up with, yeah, we should all try to come up with a few and just keep piling them up. <laughs> you know, what's funny about that is it's something I had already started thinking of. And I have a couple typed out. And I've done this before. Chris, um, oh, gosh. I'm trying to remember if you were there for the, maybe one of the Dresden file things. But I had these things typed out, and I cut them up, and we put them out on the table. And yep. it's pretty much just like what you were saying there, that um, there's, there's pre-generated rumors, if you will. And I know which ones are true and which ones aren't. And then I just share them. When you go to an NPC and ask, you know, what's up with that, that building up there on the mountain? Here's one answer. Here's another answer. Here's another. And some of them will have overlaps. And have, yeah. So right, it's right. cool that you said that because it's something I already started working on. I like it. That's dope. I don't have anything to add as far as this. It's indeed dope. Yes. <laughs> as far as this <laughs> session goes. Um, I believe like, the proper terminology is that shit is dope. <laughs> <laughs> from the old sanskrit right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that actually might be wingdings <laughs> <laughs> what is this wing <laughs> hold that here i have an associate's degree in wingdings <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting in that magic college with that shit <laughs> <laughs> I took it as those, an credit, those credits don't transfer over i'm sorry yeah. Oh, yeah. No, seventeen years. Although away, his character would tell you they transfer over, though he yeah. would totally say, it. "Yeah, these <laughs> oh, are yeah, good." Yeah, those credits. Are, yeah, <laughs> yeah, those totally. Credits Just these give me the five hundred gold now, and <laughs> cool. Um, Randy, where, where, what comfort level do you have with being able to get your character ready? Uh, I just need to get the. Uh, the handbook sheets and or at least a way to find it and uh, yeah. I'll, I can get that started pretty good pretty fast I'm pretty sure wizard still has a blank downloadable PDF on their site hmm. if not I have blank PDFs that I can that are fillable online that I can send everybody there you go and if you do it uh, <laughs> as a form fillable PDF um, then like I was saying when we put it up on the screen uh, people can read it if you yeah. want to do it handwritten it can be fun yeah. because then you I may remember, have to translate it. 
Yeah, I remember my wife told me, she's like, oh, we have the form fillable ones because your handwriting is garbage. I'm like, that makes sense. That's why I married you. <laughs> you tell I take offense, it is garbage. <laughs> garbage. Garbage. Um, Chris, you good with what we've got? Oh, yeah. That's plenty. Yep. All right, then. We will bring this one to a close with just, I guess, actually, let me make a couple of more mentions again. With the expose of here's how we do a group, we're going to start having to communicate about when our next session is going to be. We will do that as we have through email because I think it's a nice, easy way. Um, uh, this is a personal preference of mine. I do use the texts and the, the messenger chats and what have you, but I always feel like email is a lower priority thing. <laughs> I, I can send you an email and not care if you get back to me in a day or so, but if people feel like when you send a text or a direct message that you're going to get something back right away. And when it comes to scheduling, I think that is a, a lower priority thing. It's, it's more important when it's that day and we need to make a change like <coughs> canceling <coughs> yesterday. Um, <laughs> I don't know what talking about. <laughs> but um, I, I want to, again, it's, it's the idea of mentioning it to everybody. We, as this group of five folks, we now have um, each other's email so we can exchange the, the uh, lower priority information. We all uh, are on Facebook and we have one Facebook messenger group. So if we send a message, it kind of pops up quicker. Um, and we meet through Zoom. So we have different ways of communicating. And when we start talking about our next session, we'll bring up times that we're available, come to some arrangement, and then schedule it. And that's, it sounds uh, obvious, but there are so many times in, in, in my experience and in hearing from others that you get one or two people that'll say, yeah, I'm available next Monday. And everybody thinks that everybody knows but it was only one or two people that even talked about it. It's important to make sure everyone's included on the communications that everybody has to respond to. It, um, it's too easy to forget one person off the list. So especially if you're using something like a Discord, a Facebook, a something where you have the ability to set up a group, do that so that when you send your communication, you can send it to the whole group. Just a, a good practice to get into. Uh, Again, with that, one of our next communications is going to be the email to talk about our next availability, and uh, we'll get that going. In the meantime, the other thing I wanted to mention was now that we've got this session out of the way, I'm going to start to produce the things that we've done, <clears throat> meaning the first conversations I had with Eli, Jason, and then the, the one with Chris and Randy. I'm going to start putting those together, and we're going to start seeing those show up online. Um, I can't put a time on it right now, but it should be a week or so, which means uh, we should have something going uh, in July. That's my hope, at least. Sounds shouldn't, good. Shouldn't Sounds be great. much of a problem. Uh, and the one thing that I will ask you guys to have ready is most of a character sheet and <clears throat> what you want as your background with any revisions from today. So like Chris and Randy, who have already sent something, if you want to make any revisions based on what we talked about today, just put the revisions in there and resend it. Yeah. It'll just make it easier because we came up with names of things today and ways that you might be interwoven into these different places and societies and, and um, just families even. So put that together. That's a takeaway. I'm just going to be ready to start an adventure next time. I make it sound like it's that simple. Well, you know what, <laughs> aspiring DMs, it is that simple. Get ready Sometimes. and run a damn adventure. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about how difficult it is. Just do it. Well said, well said. And I did head first. Trust me, nothing will go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, oh, we all died. Good. What happened? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it depends. Do the characters all die or the people? The people. <laughs> I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. Chuck I'm going to get back to you on that one. Legally, I can't discuss that. <laughs> yes. He has our VPNs. He will be at our houses in the week. <laughs> cool. You All can right, decide so, on first or second level. Uh, first, first level. level. Right. First, first level. level. Yeah. First. So level yeah. one, D&D &D from the player's handbook. 
everything from the player's handbook. Again, Eli will do some work with the uh, fighter sorcerer idea. And anybody else who comes up with something you want special about your character, um, I have no problems making special bits here and there because you are the heroes of the world. You're not just regular people. The story is told around these characters. Uh, you may be level one adventurers, and you might not be able to take down a giant, but you're, like I was saying earlier, you're more important than that giant. So we need to make sure we have a way to make your character special, other than just the way you're going to play it. Because that'll Sweet make guy. it special. Yeah. All right. We'll wrap this one up, and we can all say bye. Bye-bye. Adios. Hey, penis. Hi. <laughs> I take the preceding podcast was brought to you by One Joe Young. You can find us online at adventuresfromtheshed.com. <laughs>